Containers are often touted for their ability to make deploying and operating software applications easier and more reliable. Those are both valid points, but when developing with containers, it can be confusing to get started, and unless you configure things properly, the development experience is quite frustrating. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to work with a containerized Node.js application, setting up hot reloading, utilizing a debugger, and wrangling with the complexity of all the various command line flags. At the end of this video, you'll be ready to get to work developing within containerized projects. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, where it's my job to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. If you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this one. Without further ado, let's jump into the code. The sample application that I'm going to use is a Hello World API written in Express.js, so it's Node.js based. As you can see, it takes up just 11 lines of code here. The only dependency is Express. Uh, and we're using a fairly straightforward Docker file. We start from the base image, install Express with the, the package.json file. We copy in our source code and then execute the app. If you're brand new to containers, I would suggest watching this video by Jake Wright, uh, Learn Docker in 12 Minutes as a starting place. And the rest of the video will make a lot more sense after that. Now let's say this was a project that you were just getting started with. The first thing that you would wanna do is build this container image and then run the application. So I can bring up a terminal here and do docker build dash T. I'll tag it with the tag hello world express. And then the period specifies my current directory. With that built, I can then run it with docker run. I want to port forward port 3000 because that's where the app is listening. So this will allow me to send connections from my MacBook into this container and then give it that name, hello world express. Now the application's running on port 3000. So if I issue a request in the browser, we see it respond with hello world. Let's say we wanted to make a change and instead of hello world, we wanted to now say hello YouTube. One of the main frustrations that people have when getting started with Docker is that because the container has an isolated file system from your host system, from your laptop or desktop that you're doing development on, you would have to rebuild the image every single time you wanna make a change. So let me just build and run this image as a starting point to show you what I mean. I would go into the source code. I would update this line. But just updating it there doesn't change anything about this container and I can reload and it still has, it says hello world. In order to have that reflected, I would need to stop that container from running, rebuild with this command, and then rerun. Now if I refresh the page, we get the updated message. As you can see, this development workflow is terribly slow. If you're used to working with Node.js, you're probably familiar with a package called Nodemon, which monitors your file system looking for changes and will restart the node process if it detects a change. We can use this within a container, but it takes a little setting up to do. Let me show you how you do that. The first thing that I'll do is go into my Docker file and here before I install anything, I'm gonna install uh, Nodemon into this container image. I can issue a run command and then yarn global add Nodemon. So now when I build this container image, uh, it will install Nodemon before it installs any of our other dependencies. Let me go ahead and rebuild the app. Now I can issue a run command like before, but I'll append a new command. So by default, my Docker image is going to run this node server.js. Instead, I can pass it Nodemon server.js. However, there's one issue with this. If I pass it as is, the Docker container can't actually see changes to my host file system. So I'll need to use what's called a volume mount. I can pass the dash V flag to mount in my present working directory into the container at my working directory here of user source app. This way, when I make changes on my local file system, it will be reflected inside the container. 
However, the issue with that is that because we have this node modules directory here in our host system, that's going to get mounted in as well, overwriting the node modules we installed when we built our Docker image. To fix this, I can actually add a second volume mount where I just mount an empty path from my host system. So I don't even include anything on the left side of the colon. And that'll just be slash user source app node modules. And then I'll issue it that node mon server.js command. As you can see, node mon starts up. We can load our API. Now let's add a couple more exclamation points, save it. And we see that even though this file is on my host file system, NodeMon inside the container detects the change, reloads the server, and now we can see that reflected in our API response. So just like that, we can get hot reloading working just like you would to developing locally inside the container. Doing this will speed up the iteration time for developing these containers immensely. The second thing that I want to show you today is how to set up using the Node.js inspect debugger uh, inside the container. So I'll kill this app. So normally to use the debugger, you would use something like node or nodemon dash dash inspect and then server.js. And this would run uh, an additional process this would run an additional server on your local host that you could connect to and get additional information from uh, Node.js about the application that it's running. However, inside the container, the configuration is a little different. So let me walk you through that. We're going to issue a command similar to what we did before, but now we'll issue this inspect command. We need to actually pass it an address of 0.0. .0 dot zero dot zero on port nine two two nine it's a default port but if we just ran that we wouldn't actually be able to connect to this debugger uh, we need to additionally port forward that port from our local system to the container And this 0.0.0, .0 address ensures that it's reachable from outside the container when we make those requests. Now, if I issue this command, we've got our app listening on port 3000, but we also have an additional debugger listening on port 9229. I can then open up my browser and in a new tab type about inspect, open dedicated dev tools for node. And this gives me a window where I can, where I've connected to my application. And now I can do something like add a debugger line. My app is restarted, my debugger is attached. If I now make that same request, the program execution actually stops at that breakpoint. I can see the state of all these variables. I can step through over to the next. We can see that it has jumped onto that line, uh, and then I can allow it to continue on. And so this is great, and now we have hot reloading working. We've got our debugger working. This command is super gnarly. We've got all these command line flags. We've got multiple volume mounts. Uh, there's no way that you're going to want to have to type this out every time. One option would be to store that command off in a make file. However, I think an even more powerful technique is to use Docker Compose. And so Docker Compose allows us to specify a configuration file in the form of YAML that can specify all these parameters and more and encapsulate that such that we can run it the same way every time. So let's create a quick Docker Compose file for this application for our development environment. So we can start by just specifying the Docker Compose version. I'm just going to use the latest minor version, 3.9. And then we specify the different services we want to have. 
In this case, we're just gonna have one service for our API server. You could also have your database service defined here, a front end service. And then in this way, you can compose multiple containers as the name implies into one single application. I'm gonna call our service express. And then I'm gonna use the build directive and I'll give it a context and just pass it the current directory. So that'll tell Docker Compose to build the files in the current working directory. We then wanna specify those same ports that we had before. So we wanna mount in 3000 and 9229. So we can do ports 3000, 3000, 9229, 9229. We'll add our volume mounts. So first we're gonna mount in the local directory into user source app. And then again, we're gonna have that empty mount so that we don't overwrite our node modules inside the container. We can specify environment variables here. So this I didn't talk about before, but it's super useful. So we might specify, for example, node env equals development. And then I'm gonna specify the command that I was passing there at the end. So this will be uh, my node mon inspect server.js. Great, and that should be it. And now if I go back to my terminal, I can just do docker compose up. Uh, this used to be one command. You had to uh, have a dash between it. They have since added it directly to the Docker CLI. So we can do it like this. It will rebuild my image because I have this build directive. It will then create my application. It will then create my application container and we can see it running here. And I'm actually gonna go modify this uh, and this will be hello world from docker compose container. As you can see, saving that file, we get our container restarted. The volume mounts are working. Uh, we will go here and make a request and we should see it hit that debugger breakpoint. Great, I'll let it continue. And then we get the updated message. So all of that functionality that we were building in with these long commands is now encapsulated in this config file that's much easier to parse and understand uh, and share with your teammates. These are the things that I wish I knew when I was first getting started with containers. Hopefully, they'll make your life developing containerized applications significantly easier. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up to let YouTube know. And if you want to continue down the DevOps rabbit hole, I'd recommend checking out one of the other videos over there. And remember, just keep building.